everyone, so my name is Leah and I'm a scientist. I spend most of my day building lasers and usually when I meet people, pretty much the first thing they say is, oh, can you, buy, can you make me a lightsaber then? And I'm sick of hearing that. So for once and for all, I'm here to say, no, I can't make you a lightsaber. But before I try and explain why it's scientifically impossible, I'll first try and talk about how cool lasers are. So in case you didn't know, laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Ta-da! <laughs> Despite being portrayed as wild science fiction objects, they're actually relatively easy to make. You just need a pumping source which acts like an oven which excites a gain medium, which is just usually a crystal. And this gain medium splurts out light which gets bounced back and forth between a pair of mirrors. With each bounce, it gets more and more intense until you get a lightsaber. But to figure out why a crystal can even emit light, we have to go on a bit of a quantum leap. <laughs> Don't freak out. Quantum is just a really poncy way of saying that we're going to break things down into small chunks. So let's take our gain medium and look at it under a microscope. And you'll see it's made out of tiny, tiny atoms. If we think of each atom like an Earth, I know it sounds far-fetched, but hang with me. Uh, just like the Earth has an atmosphere with varying levels, the atom also has an atmosphere, and this is where the electrons orbit. It's this electron atmosphere thing acts like a ladder system, so when you excite the gain medium, you're actually promoting the electrons to jump up. But electrons are also prone to having hangovers, so after excitation, it never becomes a calm down. <laughs> but it's this up and down motion which causes the emission of electromagnetic radiation, otherwise known as a light. So the separation between the rungs of the ladder, that's what gives you the wavelength of the light emitted, and wavelength is responsible for color. So at least we can say that George Lucas followed some of the laws of physics when he decided to use crystals, different crystals, to make different color lightsabers. Just don't ask for a brown one, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> that was my pee joke, everyone, sorry. <laughs> Why can't we transform them into a lightsaber? Well, you have two main issues. One, which is maintaining that iconic beam shape. And the second one is the amount of pumping power that you need. So traditionally, you would use something like a waveguide or a tube to contain light into a cylindrical rod. But true Star Wars fans would say that's cheating. They would never settle for this. So a real lightsaber has to propagate through free space. But this presents some massive issues. First of all, you get beam spread over distance as well as attenuation. So you get this kind of uh, dilution of intensity, as you can see in this wonderful picture. Also note how there's no stopping point either. So another issue is that the laser will start to heat up the surrounding air, which causes it to increase in refractive index. Refractive index is what causes light to bend. So it kind of the air goes from like transparent to like a thick lens. It's really similar to heating up sugar granules into a syrup. And these tiny lenses will start to focus different parts of the beam, causing it to break up into spots. Pretty ugly. So even if you think, well, looks don't really matter, I just want a really, really powerful lightsaber, you're going to run into a second problem, which is, how much power does it take to sever Luke's arm? Well, <laughs> we need to include a few things, like the energy to raise the temperature of human flesh to vaporization, as well as the speed you like your lightsaber to go through the arm. Like a true scientist, I will state my assumptions. So let's take a modest Babe Ruth batting speed of 70 miles per hour, a medium arm thickness, stick it into this horrible equation, which to be honest, I've only included for the really hardcore nerds out there. And you come up with 160 kilowatts. To put that into context, it's the power equivalent of 250 toasters running simultaneously. So the combination of having something like a four ton power generator strapped to your back, just to power up a really ugly looking beam means that you won't be seeing lightsabers on the shelves anytime soon. But don't be sad. Don't be the worst character either. <laughs> Laser weapons <laughs> are still a really hot topic with the US Air Force recently announcing that they developed systems for land, sea and air, including this very sexy looking handheld laser dazzle weapon. This is actually a picture from the US Air Force and not from the prop department of aliens. But if you ask me, I still think that the most lethal, deadliest weapon of all will have to be the laser-modified cat. <laughs> <laughs> Although there may be some work needed because of their unusual licking habits. And yes, this is how I'm going to end my presentation. Thank you for listening. <laughs>